This is a revision video looking at the GCSE biology topics of contraception and fertility treatments. These come up in the homeostasis and response unit of AQA GCSE biology and combined science. By the end of this video, you should be able to evaluate the suitability of different contraceptive methods, describe how contraception can be achieved using both hormonal and non-hormonal methods, describe how reproductive hormones can be used to promote pregnancy, and evaluate why fertility treatments may not be the right choice for some people. When picking a contraceptive method, you need to consider how reliable it is and therefore how likely it is that you'll get pregnant, how easily available it is and whether you're going to be able to get hold of it when you want to, any health implications, for instance some hormonal methods like certain types of contraceptive pill make you more at risk of blood clots and so if you have an underlying health condition which also makes you at more at risk of blood clotting then your doctor may not be willing to prescribe you those pills any ethical or religious views, and finally the economics. How expensive is this method to use? Hormonal contraception methods use the hormones that are produced by the ovaries to inhibit the hormones produced by the pituitary gland. FSH and LH cause the egg to mature and ovulation to happen. So without these being released, there isn't any ovulation and therefore there isn't an egg for a sperm to fertilize. Hormonal contraceptive methods include the combined contraceptive pill, which combines both synthetic oestrogen and progesterone, or the progesterone-only pill, which doesn't contain any oestrogen, and is often prescribed for people who can't have oestrogen because they have a history of blood clots in their family. There are also intrauterine systems, or IUSs, more commonly called the coil. There are two types of coil, and IUS specifically refers to the hormonal, or Mirena coil, which acts in a similar way to other hormonal contraceptives, but by giving a much smaller dose of a synthetic progesterone directly to your reproductive organs. The coil prevents an egg from implanting, even if it's already been fertilised, and as well as being significantly the most reliable contraceptive, it has a huge advantage over other methods, because once it's been inserted, it stays in place for five years, although it can be removed earlier if you decide that you want children after all. There are also non-hormonal contraceptives, which may be preferable if you experience side effects like headaches from hormonal methods, or if you have an underlying health condition which interacts with the hormones, or if you're worried about sexually transmitted infections, because a hormonal contraceptive will stop you getting pregnant, but it won't protect you from STIs. Non-hormonal contraceptives prevent conception by stopping the sperm from reaching the egg. They include barrier methods like condoms and thermidons, and also the diaphragm or cap, which is inserted into the vagina before sex. Both of these methods are often used together with a spermicidal cream, which is a cream that can kill sperm. Finally, there's the other type of coil, the intrauterine device or IUD, and this releases copper rather than a synthetic progesterone. It can also be used as an emergency contraceptive and is actually significantly more effective than the morning after pill. Both types of coil prevent an egg from implanting even if it's been fertilised, and again the copper coil can be really good because you can leave it in for up to 10 years, although again you can have it removed early if you decide to have children before that. If you're taking the higher tier then you need to be able to discuss how hormones can be used as part of fertility treatment, which couples may undergo if they're struggling to have a baby naturally. Some women struggle to get pregnant because they're not ovulating regularly, and so they may take a fertility drug which contains both follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Together, these will cause eggs to mature and ovulation to happen, and it's possible that the mother may then become pregnant in the normal way. If this is not successful, then the next step may be in vitro fertilisation treatment. In vitro means that rather than fertilisation happening inside the woman's body, it's happening in a petri dish. The first step in this process is to give the woman a high dose of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, causing several eggs to mature at the same time. These are then harvested and fertilised by sperm in a petri dish in the lab. Once these start dividing, they develop into embryos, and several embryos are simultaneously implanted into the woman's uterus, maximising the chance that at least one of these will implant and a viable pregnancy will occur. You need to be able to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of undergoing fertility treatment. On the one hand, fertility treatment may represent the only way that a woman can have a biological chance of her own. However, it's both emotionally stressful and physically taxing for the body, and success rates are low, which is why multiple embryos are often implanted at the same time. However, because multiple embryos have been implanted, there's quite a high risk of having twins or even triplets, and both of these are more risky than a single pregnancy. Also, the process is very expensive. You need to be able to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of undergoing fertility treatments. On the one hand, a fertility treatment may represent the only chance that a couple has of having a biological child of their own. 
On the other, as well as being emotionally stressful, it's also physically taxing for the woman's body, and success rates are pretty low. This is why multiple embryos are inserted into the uterus at the same time. But then this has a further disadvantage, because if more than one embryo implants at the same time, then you're likely to have twins or even triplets, and multiple births are much more risky than single births. It's also a very expensive process, whether the woman is paying for it herself or whether she's using the National Health Service, and this can often mean that couples have to give up before they're successful. Hopefully you're now more confident about your ability to explain the process of genetic engineering and evaluate whether or not it's a good idea. Thank you very much for watching, and if you found that useful, don't forget to like and subscribe below.